right. Awesome. Looks like a real bug. Like, <laughs> Hi guys, welcome, welcome. Join us now for a special Instagram Live Meet the Miniaturist. Hey Field Miniaturist, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Hi Mar Hi Martha, good to see you. Hello everybody on this Friday night or Friday afternoon, Friday late night, wherever you're joining from. Good to see everybody. How's everybody doing? Good morning in Brisbane. Hey, awesome, awesome, awesome. Where are you guys joining from? Where are you all saying hello from? Um, yeah, I love to see where everybody's coming in from. So yeah, say hello in the chat box. Definitely say hello. Give us a wave. Um, I also like to know how people found out about this. On Instagram, did you find out? Do you follow me? I'd love to know. Love to know where everybody's, sort of what everybody, what everybody, where everybody is at before we bring on our guest. Um, hey, Ontario, Maldives, Maldives, that is pretty awesome. Philly, just as great. Good to see. Scotland, I love the globalness of it all. Great to see everybody. Hey, hey, Sacramento. Awesome. Good to see everybody. So, yeah, um, I started a little bit early. Hey, Chile. Good to see you in South America. And Guadalajara, Mexico. You know, I wish these chat boxes were saved. Hey, Carl Springs, Florida. Not too far from where I am right now. <laughs> um, I, I wish, I wish, hi, Kathy Kelly Moore. Um, I wish I could save these because I'd like to go back and see if I don't like, if I don't catch it. But anyway, hey Germany, good to see you. So we have a, few, a minute before we actually start, but I wanted to get to some housekeeping um, to let you know there are a couple of things going on right now with Meet the Miniaturist and D. Thomas Miniatures. Um, yeah, I am in a tropical setting right now. I'm in beautiful South Florida um, with a dear friend of mine, spending some good times with her. Um, but okay, so a couple of things are happening. Tomorrow night, I'm doing a very special Patrons Club event. If you're not familiar with my Patrons Club, these are contributors to my Meet the Miniatures series. Um, you can find links in my bio if you want to be a contributor, a patron, you become a patron once you contribute. But I'm doing a very special Meet the Miniaturist. Um, I'm doing a sort of report on the Joanna Fisher dollhouse, which just went on view at the Museum of Arts and Design in New York City. Um, if you don't know, I live just outside of New York City, so I got to see the exhibition, I took photographs, I took video. I'm gonna do like a lot, like a live, you know, commentary, thoughts, and kind of like my perspective. I'll share all the good visuals I have from the event. Um, so um, definitely, um, Head into my chat box if you want to be a contributor, become part of my patrons club. Um, you get to be invited to these very special things, um, which are kind of cool. Um, and I'll send you a link to the event. But that event is happening tomorrow night, Friday um, at 7 p.m. And then on Sunday, I'm doing a free Zoom, Meet the Miniaturist. We're going to be, I'm going to be having uh, Lauren Dodge on from Southern, Do Southern Gothic Dollhouse. Um, she's got this great site going on here on Instagram. Check her out. See her. I'm going to be interviewing her live on Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, that's a live event. You can head into my um, bio and the link will be there to this, you know, special Zoom event. They're all very special because we're talking about miniatures and it doesn't get more special than that. Um, but without any further ado, I'm going to try to, um, I am going to get, um, oh, you're awesome. We love you too. I'm going to try to get um, Linda on and, and get her on. She's our special guest today um, for I'll Meet the Miniaturist. So hang on while we do a little, you know, fun technology stuff while we try to get um, Linda on. So hang on. Yes, Linda Fachi from Fachi Designs. If you're not following her already, you're gonna, you're gonna be following her after this. And there she is. Hi, Linda, good to see you. Hi. Isn't it great, isn't it great when technology just works? This I love wild. this. Good to see you. I'm so glad we're connecting on this very special Instagram Live. Great to see you. We're going to dive right into everything in a second. But why don't, why don't we just first tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into the fun, tiny stuff. You have a background in design and art, correct? Yes, I have a background in graphic design and advertising. I was in publishing for over 20 years. 
worked at some big titles, Life Magazine, People Magazine, InStyle Magazine. But on the side, I was always crafting. I was always right. making something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I see I see a piece of your craft space in back of you. I hope we're going to get a little bit more of a piece yes. later. Awesome. So, so at, there was a some, so you have, you obviously are creative. Um, so there came a point where you're like, okay, I'm going to try something different, something new. And you got into felting. Is that right? I got into needle felting. I was uh, invited to an event at Anthropology, and uh, a woman who was a needle felt, who was a felter, uh, yeah. was hosting it, and everyone got to make a little something. And it was about wet felting. But towards the end of the the the, the class or whatever it was, yeah. she did a little bit of needle felting. And I just got hooked. Yeah, I went <laughs> no pun intended. What is this crap? <laughs> wow. Well, you're gonna have to take us through what that all that means. Felting. I mean, people might not know, and including me. I mean, I know what felt is, but then there's a whole thing felt, and there's probably tools that are involved. So yes. ultimately, you landed on this craft of felting, but specifically tiny pets, right? Uh, needle felting. Yes. So needle. I. You know, after that night, I went home and I started Googling and then I started ordering supplies and then I started making you know, little mice, little rabbits, things like that. And then one day uh, a, a woman asked me to make a cake topper for her because her husband and, and herself uh, called each other squirrel. So I made two little squirrel cake toppers, you know, with the veil and the top hat. Oh. And then um, I just started to just evolve and start making yeah. other things. Yeah, yeah. So had you ever, I mean, I would imagine there's a fair amount of sculpting in this process. Because if you go to your Instagram, you, you really spell it out very nicely, your process. But so there's a sculpting process that's part of this. Can you talk yes. a little bit about that? Yes, it, it's funny because I, I always wanted to be a hairdresser. And my, my dad told me that uh, you try the art thing first. And, and, you know, if that doesn't work out, you can become a hairdresser. And sometimes I think that needle felting is a lot like it. It uses so many of my skills. My uncle was a famous sculptor. My dad was a sculptor. Oh, um, so you uh, have art in your back. That is in your DNA. Yes, it's my dad DNA. was a mold maker. My mom was always tinkering, making an ice skating pond in the backyard, you know, reupholstering couches. I mean, the, you know, it was just, it was my life. Yeah. And it is my life. And, and and they actually uh, encouraged you to take up art because a lot of times you hear no don't do that don't do that but they encouraged you because <laughs> my dad because i had worked for the the, the department of transportation oh. i had a graphic design job there and my father thought it was the best thing working for the city you know okay. um, yeah. benefits <laughs> it, yeah, exactly exactly but um did they encourage me the art thing? Eh, I don't know. I think it was just, you know, I knew I had to do it and wanted to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's so such you a did big it. Part of me. Right, right. So, all right. So talk a little bit about the process because you, you have become like iconic in this world. People, people sit, search you out for your uh, miniature to, um, pets. Ultimately, they are family pets that you replicate in yes. miniature. Yes, I do mostly dogs. I tried cats, uh -huh. but they are just so <laughs> difficult. And it's really odd. And, and a lot of needle felters who do dogs say the same thing, that it's yeah. very difficult to do a cat. So I stopped doing the cats. Okay. It was stressing me out. And uh, <laughs> so I just concentrate on dogs. And I do get a lot of requests for horses. And I just, I just say no to horses. Yeah. yeah. We, so you know, I we... specialize in dogs. Yeah, we talked a little bit about this when we chatted on the phone and, and before this, that, you know, there's actually three different sizes that you sort of focus in on. It's not specific to scale where, you know, the miniatures world is very hung up on scale, 112, 124, right. 144. You work off of three different sizes, let's say, but they're all in the miniature family. They're all in the miniature family. So I have a, a small size that while sitting or standing might range from three to four and a half inches tall. Okay. Then the medium goes from five to six and a half inches tall. Then there's right. a large that goes, you know, and then I actually have done a life size and I have one here that I oh. did a life size too. So I, 
I'll show you that. <laughs> I can't wait to see. But where would you say most people fit in terms of what they want? Is it the mostly the smallest? It's mostly the smallest or, or in medium. In a medium. Um, and you know, the, it, even if I say it's gonna be four and a half inches tall, it's really hard to, to, to you know, to stick to that scale. Right, um, I'm, right. I'm still not used to making, so that's when I had done a, a couple of dollhouse versions and I, it's, it's not easy. It's not stick, easy, right, right, right. That scale. I admire all you people out there who <laughs> do that. So, so you well, sort of set the expectation, look, you replicate, but you don't, necessarily focus super focus on scale you will it'll be right. small <laughs> yeah right so awesome. i have some samples here oh you want to see now we or... want to see absolutely okay so here's this 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 little guy's got a great little uh pose <gasps> oh and, yeah uh, his 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 paws are like you know he sits on his back legs a little yeah a little bit. So there's a couple of things. So you work off of, off of photographs when when you when you're asked to replicate. So you work mostly off of you work off of photographs. You don't add on ship you the dog. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I, I I think what's most amazing is not only that you capture you know the animal, the look and feel, but there's an expression on that dog's face. Can can we see that? that yes, that... a lot of people a lot of people tell me that I really I really get the wait, look at this pug. You get this... the expression. Oh he's so cute. He's so cute. He's oh he is you just want to eat him up. That actually looks like a real pug. Like I know it... and look at his little <laughs> folds in the back of his neck. Oh it's perfect. He is perfect. Oh, I, I like to say he's pawfic. P A W. He's pawfic. He's pawfic. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's awesome. He is awesome. He's in, in, in a Rottweiler. Oh, so Rottie. I make I make all the um, uh, collars as well. Right. And the yes. little bone is, you know, kind of a trademark. And uh, for the yeah. noses, I felt the noses, but then I add a little melted uh, wax to them. So, so talk a little bit about that process. So you start obviously with the photograph, but then there you actually build the bodies. Right, so what I do is I ask for uh, photographs and sometimes people will just send me a picture of the face. It's like, no, I need no. to see the yeah. whole dog. I need to right. see the markings on the side. I need to see what his tail is like, you know? Yeah. So I work from a lot of different angles and lots of times I'll Google the breed as well to get yeah. you know, the, the standard size. And then I start building the head first. So you start with the head. Yes, because I've noticed on your Instagram, you have a lot of the faces you put right up on your posts. Oh, what is that? So I'll start with core wool and I'll start needle felting it. And the more you poke it with the needle, which is this little thing. Yes. It's got these tiny barbs on the end and you keep poking and poking and stabbing. And the more you poke and stab, the more condensed it becomes. Okay. So I, I feel like this is like a ball of clay. Uh -huh. The needle is the little sculpting tool. Wow. You know? So I start with the core and then I make just the head. So I saved you a head. Ah! Wow. So that is what you would call felt? That The fur it's on just, that dog's head is felt? Is wool. 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 So like if you were to buy a piece of felt in, in, in a fabric store, it started as wool and they have these machines oh. where there are thousands of these needles oh. in a machine that are pounding the wool to make oh. the felt. Oh. And back in the 80s, a woman discovered she just, she bought a small machine with just a few needles, but she took one of the needles out and started playing with it. And that's oh. only in the 80s. And she discovered needle felting. So needle felting has not been around very long. No, no. So, so what other applications are there for needle felting? I mean, obviously, you, you make tiny pets. But do other people, like, work oh, on... Oh, they make people, fairies. Um, uh, there's 2D portraits you can do. I also do 2D portraits. So it's uh -oh. just I don't have any examples Ouch. here. So, you know, you just frame them. It's kind of two dimensional. Um, wet felting is completely different. You know, people wet. do scarves with wet, fel wet felting, but I'm not that familiar with, with that craft. 
So how does it become, okay, so, so you have the, the, the needle felting, you start to, to, to build the face. Now, how, where do you start to colorize? Do you use different color felts? Exactly, so uh, you could see. Ooh, let me those, see. It, it, you really stuff. are sculpting. You are sculpting, but your medium is, is felt. It's, is that it's wool. Is, wool. What am I trying to do here? There we go. So I have so, all my colors up there. Oh, 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 that's shades. what we're looking at. Right, all my oh, wool. Oh my goodness. So you are actually literally weaving in tiny pieces of wool to create all yeah, the coloration. It's literally- One like hair. This, exactly. Just to get that little spot or like a highlight in the eye, a little white in the eye. So you take just a tiny bit. So this is why I have 20 pair of glasses around. <laughs> My can studio, you my house can you correct can you go back and correct or once that's, it's in it's in no 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 that's the beauty of needle felting you can oh Glitter. i've been known to literally tear the whole thing apart i'll <gasps> when i first started i would lose sleep over it i would go <laughs> to bed knowing that it wasn't just right and i'd spend hours on it and i had a regular nine to five job so i was oh, wow. late doing this and i get up in the morning and just tear the whole thing apart and start over. It didn't feel right to me. I wasn't, it wasn't, You're, but it's very forgiving. It's very forgiving. You know, you just, doesn't work. You either cover it or you just pull it out. I've been known to cut heads off, cut a leg <laughs> off. You know, One time I showed that on Instagram and someone got very upset because it looked <laughs> like a real dog. I said, oh, I'm, like, I thought of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow. Oh yeah. my. So that's, 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 you're, that's an artist. That's an artist. And that's actually very, that's a miniaturist. I know you don't consider yourself yeah. a miniaturist. You are a felt artist, but there's a lot of qualities of a miniature in there. Yeah. So yeah, look, you know what? We do have a question already. And folks, please, um, I feel free to use the comment section to ask questions. Do you, do you dye your roving? What's a roving? No, this is, this is a, uh, roving is wool that is, uh, long strands of wool oh wow it's one continuous you know strand uh -huh. of wool and right. then uh batted wool is just kind of like right a dust bunny type of thing it's so not I'm, I, I, but i don't so, do no i've never i haven't gotten into that my husband and i want to maybe get um sheep or, or or lambs or lambs probably couldn't felt, but sheep would be fun. And wouldn't it be great if I could, you know? It's right. What? It, comes, it, it comes from my garden. You know? Oh, oh! You would have your own sheep? Is that what I you're saying? I have my own sheep, and I can make my own wool and dye it. But I haven't done that. And there are some vegan people who have asked me if I use like a synthetic wool. They don't want the real stuff, but I haven't. I haven't done that. Right. So I, 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 did you cover this already? So how do you get to the color? Do you buy them colored already? Oh yes, they're all. They're all. They're all you buy them in those colors. Yes. Wow. You buy them in that color. So wow. they're all di different shades, and there's merino, and there's cordial, and there's all sorts of of different. Some are coarse, some are fine. Uh, oh. All the needles. The needles are different um, weights. Yeah, and, and barbs, and that took a long time to, to learn all that stuff. You know, I'll, I I'll use bet. one needle at the beginning. You know, until so I yeah, think, well, there's more than one. Well, that was going to be the question. What are what are the tools you use? Obviously, use those needles. And what are your what's your favorite all all time favorite tools to use and must have tools? A a forty gauge uh, needle felting needle, forty gauge and a thirty eight, and I work on a foam pad. Oh, look at that. Right, you right, right. Want to, and what's great about this craft is you just can sit on your in your chair. Yeah. And have this on your lap. You can do it in a car. You can do it on a bus ride, you know, and you just lie your, you know, your, your wool on this pad and just poke. And so just a scissor, needle, and, and, um, and sometimes just a regular sewing needle to kind of pull the something out or make it a little, a little Puffier and what are you anything and then the book what do start with what's that with uh pipe cleaners pipe cleaners the pipe cleaners start the head yeah so what is it that you are pushing and pulling the the wool through what material is there it is starts there... 
No, it starts with, with this. You start with that? And you could just, I'm just so confused. <laughs> I know, you literally just, you literally just keep poking and poking until, you know, this becomes a ball and then you start building on it with, and with you, wool. That's incredible. I'll, so, I'll put more videos on my Instagram about, you know, starting yeah. to finish. So Carolina wants to know, have you been to the Maryland Sheep and Wolf Festival? What no. Is, there no, are festivals? Oh, yeah. Come like, on, Darren. There are festivals for everything. You know that. <laughs> but but people are not going there to find wool, are they? I guess they are. Yes. Yes. They go there to find wool. There's actually a, a festival in Rhinebeck up here in the Hudson Valley. And I was going to teach a class but co last year, but COVID happened. Right. But they have, you know, classes. And I also have some videos on Skillshare and Teachable if anyone wants to learn. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I, this... this this for me, I am learning, and this is what this is all about. Yes, it, it is very ther. Someone said it's cathartic. Yes, cathartic. It's, it's very therapeutic. I mean, you can get your your frustrations out. You know, one time I was sitting in the park doing this, and uh, someone walked over and and thought I was doing voodoo. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, how long have you actually been doing this? And this is full time for you, right? This is now full. I quit my job at Magnolia Bakery, famous oh, Magnolia wow. Bakery, That's as creative right? director, which was a great job. Yeah. And um, I started this full time uh, two years ago, and uh, I love it. I just yeah. can't believe I make a living felting animals. Yeah. Uh, well, like I said, one. you have a you have a following. I, I you you have oh this. Oh man, that is just great. This oh. is for this is actually a gift for just Jenny from Jenny Hut on Sirius XM. I, I don't know okay. if this is her, but no. I'm a big fan of hers and she just lost Hazel. Oh so I made I made uh I made her a Hazel. Oh. Um, but someone just tuned in that this is her dog. I don't hope she oh. hopefully she's still on. Oh so that's and what's Milo. Milo is it yeah. Sea Garden 10? Oh my God. Hudson Valley represent. Yes. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and then if you want to see my life size one. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's a little, it's a little chihuahua. Now, how long did that take you to make? Yeah, this one took a long, a long time. Oh um, my goodness. I don't it's... do many life size ones. But, but every that's... once in a while, I do small breed life size ones. Yeah, and that's his real collar. Oh. I had the owner send the collar He's to me. He's awesome. That is just yeah. awesome. She's beautiful. Oh. Well, I mean, I think this is just fascinating. I mean, I think just, I don't think people understand the, the, the work that goes into one of these. It's, and just how really creative and artistic and how much like, it's not easy. Someone it, said, which is really good, you make it look easy, but it's not. It's not. It's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of detail work. It's a lot of, I really, I really, really try hard. Did it just go dark? Is that me? No, you're good. I'm good? Yeah. Um, I really. Well, oh, you're back. I really try hard to get it as close to the real dog, you know? And, and I've, I've, yeah. I've heard that people cry when they open the box and. You know, I that, bet they that their do. Little dog is back, so it's sweet. I bet they do. And you know, I th I think the uh, mainstream media picked up on you. You were on Good Morning America. Where, who Good else morning, is, America. have you been on? I was uh, on an Australian news show. I was on Good Morning America. Oh. I was in the New York Daily News. I was on the Chew. Oh. I did two dogs for the for Michael Simon and uh, I forget the other guy's name, um, but they were really. Um, um, thrilled with their with their dog. So I was trending. That's I how this all started. Because of Instagram, I was trending and the insider did a, a video on me Perfect. and all of a sudden I got tons of followers and tons of orders and yeah. I was like, oh my God, can I do my regular job and this at the same time? You know, and it took And me the a answer while. is no. <laughs> and I remember someone asking me, do you think you'll ever quit this job and do this full time? I was like, no, I'm not gonna. Right. No, there's no way. And right. we're in them, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I think you're touching upon something that that is just so near and dear to um, pet owners' hearts. You know, we want them to live on, you know, after we lose them or even when they're still around. And I think that that is what you do. You give pet owners, you know, this you know, the, 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 they, they live on forever with your, with your creations. Yes, and I can also use the pet's hair or fur. And if oh, I can't, I usually incorporate it within, uh, into the wool. Uh, and then I use a, a mixture of it. And I can also embed the ashes into the dog if, oh. someone, wants, if someone wants that. That's fantastic. All right, so yeah. how can people find you? Obviously here on Instagram, but do you have an Etsy site also? How I have you, an Etsy you... site. Just go on Etsy and Google, uh, you know, Fachi Designs, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I finally got the link, to, link tree. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I yeah. Checked, that I works. checked out yours to figure it out how to do it. It's super easy. And that's great because people can find you it's anywhere fantastic. with that. Fantastic. Yeah. It's great. So, so that's awesome. Out. Perfect. So does anybody have any other questions before we let Linda go back to her awesome work and her workspace? Let's see. Oh, you love what you do, and it shows. That is absolutely true. And if you're doing what you love That's to do, true. you have found you have found it. You really have found it. So you're yeah. you're doing great stuff. Yes, because there's a lot of crafts that I do, and I and you know I might tire of them, but this I haven't tired. I haven't. Uh, this still is exciting to me. That, and that's really important for an artist. You wanna you don't wanna yeah. feel like you yeah. have to do it. So if you're still.